then it is a really a problem because the children also have cp along with that and then your coordination becomes a problem like uh, eye hand coordination and then you are struggling because the child cannot write and you are doing the exercises for the vision also and uh, the child has motor and uh, issues and also children with a lot of sensory issues i think the age genesis of corpus callosum was another which i found that was not very good prognosis um, the other periventricular leukomalacia depend it depended on how much it was affected yeah it was much much um, uh, we could manage the other problem is when we have children with epilepsy uh, like when they have epilepsy you have treated and then they get an epileptic episode and then they go back uh, to what you have improved the child to so these are few of the children like we found like um, epilepsy especially like was a real deterrent and especially for treating it also further like uh, if you have a squint then it's a problem like you they won't take up anesthesia and that's the reason so um now the next talk is on strabismus i don't think anything different is there uh, for strabismus like um, everybody asked what is so unusual about cvi with strabismus what is there to talk about uh, basically yes uh, the main problem is assessments so when to do it it's like so i mean of course there is no um, i can't teach you a faster method of we just have to keep on measuring three four times and when you can get a proper assessment then we have to plan the surgery but there is definitely an improvement uh, after surgery so we should aim at surgery um so like this uh, like this child when it comes to you and you few feel that the child is a wandering movement we can't operate this child saying that there is an uh, there is a uh, strabismus so we'll have to wait we have to improve the cvi range we'll have to improve uh, the fixation and then only we can go ahead for surgery so this is a child who came to us when he's 5 years of age and we had poor vision squinting both eyes maintaining a head posture he was being called clumsy in school slow learner and that is how you feel bad that should i have intervened should we have intervened early should he have been referred early he was a child uh, the preterm child and did not cry at birth was in iku for 10 days there was a history there was a mri done uh, there was a history of perinatal hypoxia and it was referred and still the child was told that no treatment was advised so at 3 years he fell down the steps because of poor coordination he suffered then from right hemiplegia and facial palsy so I don't know if we I would have also operated the child at 2 or 3 years maybe if the child would have come but yes early intervention could have been started we could have started occupational therapy and the child could have been better and now of course it was very easy at 6 years to plan the squint strabismus surgery because the child is like any other child uh, he could read uh, her vision was 624 so but he had problems of hemiplegia and um, I do not know if we could have averted it So similarly, we find so many children in the OPD which we get who were preterm, uh, who had CVI, and when you take the birth history, you find that oh God, this is a squint, but actually this was a CVI child. So, for there was no there's no difference in the treatment later on. You are going to do the normal squint surgery like uh, recess, resect, and if there's a DVD associated, you operate. Oh, this is really ulta. Means I ensured it was straight, but again it is. So this is a child who came into the OPD recently, and um, you. rotate ho sakta hai kya so uh, again the child was at cvi had an infant had an isotropia with very poor fixation we could not get the vision but the child was we could the child was cooperative on mkt and we could find that there was uh, an isotropia we could measure it as isotropia of 30 prisms and uh, there was an inferior oblique overaction with dvd so we are planning surgery because uh, this child will improve the child is not able to walk properly he stumbles so we can plan surgery but of course you would measure 3 4 times the other child is um, a child ye video ye sab ulta pulta i had checked it also <laughs> so uh, this child has sobita mentioned that there was a gaze paresis so the child is not is only preferring to gaze in the uh, there was a right gaze and not looking at all to the left now the child is uh, sleepy as she was asking me well, how will you measure in such children with inattention so you just have to wait so now this child had a full left gaze now can we call this uh, left gaze palsy 
we don't know basically because uh, because a child has lot of inattention but what i have seen recently when a child is older uh, means i looked up literature and giving prisms help so the we found out that after giving prisms like in a saccadic paresis or in a gaze paresis when you give prisms as your prisms and the, we found that the child started improving the mother came back after 3 4 months saying that the child has started fixating and the child is looking like in fact when next time and sovita seen this case she was wondering whether there was a saccadic paresis before that so um the it improves so maybe a trial of prisms could be given like in horizontal gaze palsy and it the child is really improved the parents felt that the prisms had helped the child so these are some of the things which we could uh intervene and we could uh, uh, you know we could help the children so the strabismus coexistent is as high as 73% and uh, this is what we found in our study which has uh, was, was done by roly here and um, the main specific traits is that there's angle variability and shifting patterns so um this is again what studies have proven that all types of strabismus you'll see uh, mixed deviations I mean, whatever you see, normal strabismus with you will see them. Now, this is a study. Of course, uh, Roly has done mainly the data and the full uh, uh, the study. The we found that the CVI with esotropia in our study we found exotropia more, and uh, most of the papers were mentioning esotropia as more, and we found it associated with all types. Same like we had an accommodative component with myopia with the stagmus, and we also had. Uh, so, important thing is don't jump to surgery. observe children if it is an iso uh, like you find that there is very poor visual behavior unstable deviation please wait because i have seen many of the children resolving spontaneously and when i 30 40 prisms of iso when i see them after one year when they are stable and they have very if their visual behavior has improved we find them improving with time and i mean i feel good that i have not operated that child because otherwise i would have landed up with an consecutive exotropia so wait don't just okay we have got so repeated measurements and we need stable and constant measurement before planning surgery so now this is a simple esotropia i do uh, most of us would do the same surgery a bimedial resection i have done for this child but the important thing which i wanted to cover in this child is that we need to ensure that the child undergoes a post operative visual rehabilitation and vision therapy you may have improved the child in the motor part remember that there is still a sensory component and also these children have lot of other problem like their vision is not full they have lot of coordination problems a vision therapy is a must you need to improve their saccades so uh, the vision therapist in our institution do a lot of saccadic exercises after the surgery and that improves them much better to function especially for writing and reading and because you need you need your saccades and pursuits for the child to read and write so this is very important and also uh, helping them in their perceptual skill training there's something called as perceptual skill training nowadays which the vision therapists do where they improve their coordination so this is available and uh, that's how we can improve the child's education so um, the long term results they found with developmental delay or that there were less surgical uh, predictable surgical results so wait do constant measures and it is not so bad now dr uh, minakshi ma'am has done the study with cometin isotropia in patients with developmental delay and she published her results and she felt that we should under correct because we get over corrections so 16 to 20 percent means we, we they have mentioned that 30 percent under correction, but I would say that we don't need to do more 30 percent under correction, but we need to at least 20 percent under correction of your bimedial recession we need to do. Otherwise, they again go into consecutive exotropia. I have had children going into consecutive exotropia after uh, operating them. So after two three years, again they go into consecutive exotropia because the sensory does not develop, and then you have to go in again and do an advancement surgery. so uh, and then they go really bad they have very large uh, consecutive exotropias so um, this is so our own study we pub uh, we have not published we have sent it for publication but i just wanted to share is that earlier on i was operating at a much earlier age i used to go ahead and do even less than 2 years with developmental delay and neurological impairment uh, but what i because we wanted okay let them get good binocular vision but what we found was that uh, that operating early did not give us major advantage in children with cvi they had uh, the, so it's better to wait let their motor stabilize 
and then go ahead with the surgery because many of them what i found was that no none of them develop stereopsis sensory was poor in so many like this is where we have compared our numbers are not uh, same like we did around um, our numbers were around in our uh, normal there are numbers yeah we found that we did around 17 in the children with neurological and 80 with normal children and we found that fusion was absent most of them and 90% of them so we didn't get any sensory output so good so it is better to wait rather than what we found that because we are getting consecutive xt in lot of patients because if we have operated early we found that consecutive exotropia when they improved their visual behavior then we had to go in another surgery and the parents are very reluctant then so uh, so i think the surgical management is the same as we do for other squint uh, management but mostly it is that uh, they we need to work on their perceptual skills even after surgery because they come with that and after you perform their surgery we uh, we uh, we are uh, doing a study on the dutton's questionnaire we are seeing how it improves pre and post surgery uh, we are trying to um, modify we are trying to see whether it improves their functional skills rather than uh, just doing the uh, squint surgery and we are getting good outcomes it will be published very soon and uh, sometime we may need to do multiple surgeries so that's all i want to say that uh, we have to um, we need do not rush to them to do surgery early wait for stable measurements and improve their visual behavior and then operate thank you any questions uh, i think we coming to our last talk so any questions before that um, yeah yeah sure mic mic please and uh, your surgical uh, your surgical way of approach the case will differ if it is nystagmus with strabismus yes definitely than yeah. per se strabismus alone so most yeah. of them will be com combination of both yeah most of them will have nystagmus so most of them it will be like nystagmus with your with your strabismus so we'll need to see whether the Binocular face turn surgeries and addressing the face turn along with the strabismus should be done yes. rather than your success rates will be much better than rather than looking at strabismus alone in one particular i like exotropia or esotropia they will have some face turns and there will be an exotropia or esotropia associated with it so you do a surgery for the face turn and in addition try to do the skin search yeah and what rate would you prescribe the visit for the that was i think a 5 four 5 year old child 5 year old we actually the uh, yolk prisms we cannot give more than i mean some are saying 3 we i we have means three prisms you can give maximum um, uh, i have mean, given five in this child but you yeah five yolk huh. but you uh, first paper that paper which i read because to go it was saying that you can give even three and you get good results there is going to be experiment and the mm. one one strategy could be using one eye to correct alignment and fixing eye to use for nystagmus surgery so that also works well if you are confused about what to do and with moving this eye that way how it will affect then this is one way you choose the fixing eye to correct the head posture and non fixing eye to correct the alignment separate now roli will be telling us when the dust settles